praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, cherisher and sustainer of the universe, and may his choicest blessings be upon his final messenger, Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his family, his companions, radiallahu anhum, and all those who follow him. Ahlan wa sahlan and marhaba, and welcome to another quick and easy uh, cooking program, a joint production by ITV and Say Global Productions. We'll tell you more about our social media handles later in the program. Right now, though, I'm very honored to be in the presence of Sister Farhana Lambat. But before I introduce you, Sister Farhana, I have to tell them about uh, the quick and easy book, uh, recipe book. This is the first one that was done years ago, and it's all the tried and tested recipes that we did on air with you and in a book form. So if you want to be part of the second edition, as Sister Farana is going to be, then do share us, share with us some of your recipes and ideas and comments, etc. And inshallah, you can be part of this wonderful program where it brings families together, where it brings wholesome food to you, eat of the, full, uh, the land that's pure and clean. And Sister Farana, I, in a previous program, you heard how she makes her own spices, etc. So welcome once again, Sister Farana Lambat, to Quick and Easy Cooking. Jazakallah so much for having me on the show again. Again, and we, we're now experimenting with um, some Ramadan goodies, uh, some Ramadan quick and easy recipes so that you don't spend too much time in the kitchen, you spend more time with Ibada. And Sister Farana is going to tell us about what the recipe is that you're going to bring today. But before we get there, why have you chosen what you've chosen for today? The reason why I've chosen this is that it's uh, a very special recipe from my late aunt, okay. my mom's sister. Okay. Um, ever since she introduced this recipe to us and my kids have tasted it, mm. like everybody needs to have a samosa every day on the iftar table, <laughs> we need to have cutlets every day on our iftar True. table. Yes. So very often during uh, Ramadan when I'm making the preps, my sons will tell me, please don't try anything new. You know what we want. We only want cutlet spice. And Wonderful. certain things makes that they know work. about, so it makes my life easy. The only thing is that this is quite a big job. It's a lot of work. And when I make it, it's not just a kilo recipe. It's always five to seven kilos. Oh. Because you don't want to do it every day. Like yes, you say, yes, we yes. don't want to take time for um, to, in Ramadan. And we need to make time for Iftar. But uh, yes, it's been in our family for years. And um, all my mom's siblings and their kids, which are all my first cousins, it's uh, one of our special things. So, all you want to see that in our family. All that, yeah, Lambat and Jasat. Yeah, Jasat. <laughs> Jasat, yes. So, yes, this is, uh, she's giving credit to all your ancestors so, and to your she, connection. So, Allah illuminate the cover with, uh, with grand and general for those and for leaving a legacy of wholesome eating, inshallah. Sister Farana, you also make your own spices, as true, I said. True. And one of those spices that we are going to be talking about, and we'll show it to you in a moment, is the green masala. masala. So what are we, what's it called today? It's cutlets. Today it's called and cutlets. I believe these are it's the basically four-in-one cutlets. Many recipes go around. Um, I've seen them on recipe groups, and it always is very simple. Right. Uh, very minimal ingredients in the chicken as well, which right. I've prepared. Um, so let's get to them. Yes, so sir. let's go through the ingredients yeah. first of all. Let's start from there. Okay. Okay. So you need a uh, boiled macaroni, and you blend it. You you've already prepared it, so yes. we save time. So we save time. Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, the reason I use the elbow macaroni is because it's quite small. Oh. So when you form your cutlets, you don't want your cutlet to break. Mm. You see, it's very important for your texture of and your cutlet. And how long do you uh, boil, boil it for? I just until uh, it's cooked. Uh, okay. Dante, yeah. So not, ten, not, very, so, not okay. very soft. So the minute you just feel it's, it's, quite, it's, it's not soft. Right. It's not very soft. Okay. You need crumbs for your coating. You need cheese for Is it for chicken your uh, bread crumbs? Bread crumbs, okay. yeah. Uh, Kellogg's bread crumbs. Sometimes I make my own crumbs. Um, a cheese for binding, the flour, the crumbs and the eggs are for the coating. Okay. Oil for frying. So what, how many, what's the quantity? Uh, it's just for coating, we're going to coat. So okay, I just, so just put in, yeah, enough. because you, as you okay. make, you're going to want to add more oil. And the oil is for the frying. The oil is for the frying. The chicken is very, very minimal ingredients. You uh. put some ghee into your pot. Okay. When it's heated up, you throw in your cubed washed chicken. Uh. Only green masala. So for a kilo of chicken, you would use two to three teaspoons of green masala, one to two teaspoons of salt, and a quarter teaspoon of arad. You don't want it to be very, very yellow. Yellow, yes. And the arad, because there's no other spices, the arad tends to pick up the color very uh, quickly. And, and another ingredient that you've already pre-cooked yes. halfway. Halfway was with the ghee, the green masala, salt, and the arad. So this is what so it that's looks what like. It is, yeah. So you're still going to cook I'm it I'm still going to just cook it a bit okay. uh, more, just to show you the texture. And then you're going to, one of your binding ingredients as well is mesh. That's why they call it a four-in-one cutlet, which is your chicken, your mashed potato, your cheese, and your 
um, macaroni. Mm -hmm. The mash as well should not be a very soft mashed potato like how we make when we're eating mash with mm. uh, chops or mash with food. The mash must be quite stiff. So you don't boil your potatoes until it's very, very soft. Mm. Um, the mash must be stiff because it needs to bind your... If your cutlet is not binded well, when you fry, it will all break. Mm. It will become like so a So that's an important thing. Your, that's very, very important. important. That's a very important To be thing. honest, um, all the years uh, when I used to be at work, my late aunt, my Rashida Kala, that taught us how to mm. make this, would come and make it for me because, like I say, I used to make ah. it in big quantities. And the year that before she passed, in fact, the year that she passed away when she came to assist me, she told one of my helpers who was helping us and she said, you must learn how to do this because I'm not going to be next year. And she insisted about the potatoes being not soft. Okay. And guess what, Murphy's Law, the right. next year when I was all by myself, yeah. five kilos of chicken with a very soft mesh and everything was breaking. Allah I had to phone my mom's best friend. I had to phone my other aunt. They were at some fate. They all ran here. Okay. We're trying to bind this together. We're adding more chicken. We cooked more. But Nothing. there's one ingredient that has to be right. Just, yeah. So it's, so it has, it's very mustn't important. It mustn't be very soft. Okay, that's yeah. very important. Another right? thing I also tend to see is that sometimes when you bind everything together, you lose taste for your, you lose the potency of mm. your chilies. So mm. what you can do is when you're boiling your mash and you're mashing it, you can add a little bit of green masala again. That would be nice. So that it uh, keeps the... The flavors wonderful together. beautiful tips and the ramadan you don't have all this time so you need I to know. get your ingredients <laughs> yeah. right and you know what i only have time on my hands now because i worked all the year so everything i needed to do used to be very quick and easy right. or it used to be a weekend thing right but uh, my kids are very fussy with savories and we don't ever buy wonderful so everything gets done from home so are we going to take this to we can take this to the stove stuff. and then okay. we're just going to give this a bit of a boil okay so now it's getting its final cook on the stove right stove. So you're not going to make it too soft, no. and your muscles will give it yes. a quick cut. Yeah, a quick one. So. All right. You shouldn't and also dry it too much. You, yeah. There should be no water residue, okay. but it shouldn't be extremely dry yeah. because you want everything to bind, to bind. as okay, well. Fine. And uh, another tip when mixing everything, it should be nice and warm. Okay. That's why okay. I didn't want to cook it completely yeah. so that the potatoes, the hot potatoes, go into your chicken and your macaroni and the cheese. All the cheese starts melting into the... Right. into the mixture is I'll show you when we're ready with okay this so as soon as we this is nice and cooked we're gonna mash it we're up gonna mash it and we're gonna add everything and then we're gonna bring it to the table yes. so is it still a bit more we, uh, just about two minutes all right fine all right so we're going to be doing this and after the break we're going to show you how uh, sister binds it and fries it and prepares it and uh, do the test tasting stay with us we'll be back.